How have you seen a person's life be ruined in a single day? We had extended family together for a holiday, and everyone was making jokes about how my cousin was late. His mom and dad were involved in the jokes, texting him being upset about how he was late and all. Turns out, someone hit him in a head-on collision on his way over, and he died on impact. The police knocked on the door, to notify the family like a fucking movie. I'll never forget watching the family crumple to the ground. An 18-year-old tried to steal a couple bottles of Hennessy from my store. When I confronted him, he swung the bottle at my head and connected. I rolled with the blow, so it didn't do much damage. Charged with assault and robbery by my company. Violent crimes offender and lost custody of his baby. I was working in a bank, one day the director fired one of his executives, the whole empty your desk, your fired speech in front of everyone. The director was furious and the guy seemed entirely destroyed. Then he explains to all that this guy gave his login and password to a friend in another branch. The friend used that login and others while doing some kind of credit card fraud. Police arrested her, but lacked evidence against the fired guy. So, they just fired him on the spot, obviously besides losing his job he was also blacklisted to work in banks or finance. One of my friends, was playing online with me, when I hear a knock on his door through the mic. His parents walk in, and decide to tell them, that he is adopted, and that they are getting a divorce. All in one go. No emotional breaks or anything and my friend just breaks down over the mic as his parents walk out. When I was about 13, I was talking with my best friend at a playground on a hill. Suddenly this lady comes racing down on her bike. She's not wearing a helmet which was unfortunate, because her bike slipped from underneath her, and she goes flying, smacks her head into a corner. I was too young to know this at the time, but I'm almost certain she died instantly. Wear a helmet. This was a few years ago. I work in a hospital. Got notified a large trauma was coming in. A minivan got struck by a drunk driver with the grandpa, aunt and three kids under 10. The aunt survived. The kids came to my hospital, one dead on arrival and the other two we couldn't save. Kept them. On life support until the parents got there to say goodbye. I'm always going to remember the sound of the mom singing to them. She lost all her kids and her dad in one day. My stepdad's life was ruined the day his son my brother died. He couldn't cope with the loss, couldn't comprehend the rest of us were hurting just as bad, and turned even deeper into the alcohol, and became even more emotionally abusive. Couple years later, when he forced my mom, to choose him or me, I watched her make the hardest decision I've probably ever seen her make. She walked away from her husband, the love of her life. My mother, and I no longer have much of a relationship. She made the right choice for the wrong reason. She has point blank told me she regrets having me. My stepdad is, as far as I know, still drunk off his ass and living alone. My mother is alone and living with regrets. As for me, I'm still healing from the scars, but mostly doing okay. I am still processing my mother's words. I do not take the blame she tried to place on me. I do not feel that I am a mistake. I know that her feelings problems are not my fault. I know I am here for a reason, even if I don't know what it is. I had a former colleague who was doing his residency in general surgery. He had just started his fifth and final year of training. One day, in the middle of a surgical case, the police show up at the hospital for him. A tech pulled him out of the or, and he was arrested right there on the spot in front of everybody, still in most of his surgical attire. He had to do the walk of shame through the entire hospital, in handcuffs and scrubs. Turns out his ex-wife had gone to the police claiming that he had molested their children. The children testified to this effect as well. All of us were blown away. This was the sweetest, most cheerful guy ever. Nobody thought him capable of something like this. Sure, enough it came out several months later those the kids' statements were coerced, and that his ex-wife falsified the whole thing. It wasn't the first time she had attempted to screw him over, but it was definitely the most successful. I grew up best friends with my sister, and one day she didn't come home from work I was 16 at the time, she was 22. I heard my parents start to rumble around the house turning the lights on, and I could hear more commotion and panic. 
The cops had called our house because they found my sister's car damaged on a street in the middle of a neighborhood with the driver's side door still open, and they found one of her shoes was in the middle of the street. The next morning, still no sister. She worked as a bartender. She left work that night and some guy followed her, side swiped her car, and when she got out to swap insurance, he kidnapped her and put her in his truck and drove off and that night continued to rape and abuse her and held her captive through the night and into the next day. My sister managed to escape that next day and run to the nearest house, banging on the doors. The homeowners let my sister in and called 911. They could tell she had been beaten and attacked. She was taken to the hospital which is when we got the phone call where she was. She had two broken ribs, her face was nearly black and blue, both black eyes, and scratches all over her body. After that I've never had my sister back. She survived the attack, but she suffers horrible anxiety and panic attacks. She can't go out in public alone. She drinks heavily, and is terrified to move out of my mom's and live alone. I don't know, I just used to look up to her, and we would laugh, and watch movies and bounce on the trampoline, and she would drive me to try local food chains, and we would listen to music, and ever since I've never had my big sister back. I'll always love her, but it breaks my heart. In one day, her life changed for the worst. When I was in EMT school we were told about a paramedic student, instructor was a paramedic as well, who observed a stabbing call. They arrive at the bar, and see a dude with a knife in his abdomen. Medic student takes lead and pulls the knife out, something you never do as I'm sure you know. Senior medic loses his fucking mind at this dumbass, asking him what the fuck he was thinking. Student freaks out, and, you guessed it, puts the fucking knife back in. The patient died as a result, student lost any chance of having a good job, not even just an EMS, and was charged with the death of the patient, might have been manslaughter I don't remember. His entire life was ruined, because he freaked out, and made a mistake on a call, not a rookie mistake or a common slip up, but in about half a minute he ruined his life. Not my personal experience, but a national news story a van full of college students got into an accident and most of them died, but one girl survived with major injuries. She had facial trauma, and was hospitalized for weeks. She kept repeating another girl's name as she was recovering. Turns out, she was saying her own name. She and another similarly built, same hair and eye colored female passenger were mistakenly identified for each other in the aftermath of the crash. Her family had a funeral for her, and the other girl's family were the ones at her bedside before the misidentification was realized. I cannot even imagine the suffering of thinking your daughter was alive for weeks, and then learning she'd been dead all along, or having a funeral for a child who was actually alive, and you didn't know. One of the former anesthesiology residents in the program here was in his last, CA3, year. He was emergency call, which comes after C1, C2 and C3, and basically never ever calls in, but you have to be available in the event that you do get called in. Most people will sleep with their phone on, or go out to the movies, or do basically anything within a 30-minute drive of the hospital. Some crazy car accident happens that night around 2 a.m. and multiple trauma cases are going back into the OR. Our dude fell asleep, and his iPhone did some automatic update, so he didn't get the call from the hospital immediately. His pager battery also died sometime that evening. He doesn't realize any of this until he's getting ready for work the next day at around 5.45 am, and sees his phone blown up. Shows up to work at 6, fired on the spot. Guy was two months away from graduation and starting salary of $400k a year plus overtime. When I was a kid, I lived in an apartment complex. One of the families had three young kids. One day the parents needed to run some errands, so they hired a babysitter to watch the kids. The babysitter fell asleep, and one of the kids started playing with some matches. The parents came home to huge billowing clouds of smoke and fire coming from all the windows. All three kids and the babysitter died. They were only gone for about an hour. When I was seven, my father came home from work and told my mother he wanted a divorce. He grabbed a suitcase and packed some things while my mother alternated between crying, trying to cook dinner for me and my brother, and screaming at him that he was insane, she had no idea where this was coming from, and she would change the locks if he left. He did leave, and she did indeed change the locks the very next day. She went from a homemaker to a single mother the next day, and our standing of living fell immensely. 
I don't think she ever recovered from the stress of the divorce and trying to raise us on her own. Thinking about what a kind, smart, and wonderful person my mother is, and how my father basically ruined her life when she was only 32 makes me really sad. She just wanted to have kids, and then go back to work, when we were both in grade school, so she could be a teacher like she wanted to. But the divorce killed, that dream. We became latchkey kids in a bad neighborhood, while she had to work in call centers, or in hotel housekeeping, because being a teacher didn't pay enough, or give her enough time off to take care of us. I became a surrogate mother for my baby brother, when my mother worked long hours. It was a culture shock, to say the least. I remember going to therapy, which I now know, was court ordered, because my mom wanted to have sole custody, so she had to have us evaluated to prove that my dad wasn't up to task of sharing custody, throughout the divorce proceedings, and counselors telling me over and over that it was going to be okay, that my parents still loved us, and we'd still go to the same school, and have the same life we would have. I didn't believe them at the time, and I was right too. Our lives derailed entirely that single day. I'm okay, so is my brother. But my mother gave all of her health, and the best years of her life to raising us in thankless circumstances, while my father failed to pay child support, and came around only enough, to avoid a bench warrant, or to prevent my mom from gaining sole custody and increasing his support obligations. It makes me bitter to see him happy now, and my mother in poor health, when she's two decades too young to have the health problems of an 80 year old. Related, my grandmother became our second mother in the wake of the divorce. The stress of that killed her as well. You can track pictures of her from about 55, when my parents got divorced, and how young, and beautiful she was. Then you look at pictures of her in her 60s, and she looks haggard. She died of cancer in her early 70s. I block out the memories of those early days for a long time. I've only recently done the heavy lifting of trying, to dig up the emotions and events of my life from age 7 to about 14, I honestly remember little to nothing, traumatic memory is wild, pursuant to my goal of trying to support my mom, partially because she deserves it, partially because I don't want her to meet the same fate as my grandmother. It's weird to think about how I wouldn't be on the hook for my mom's failing health now, I could have had a happier childhood, and my mom could have had a better life, and my grandmother might not be dead, had my dad just decided not to be a miserable. My front neighbor, 1920F, committed suicide one morning. We found out when we saw the police and ambulance arrive in front of our houses. I was watching by the window, because I was kind of curious, and I was feeling so sad I just couldn't stop watching. When the mother arrived, I saw her fall on her knees, and break down crying when the officers told her daughter was dead. It was truly heartbreaking. I don't think I'll ever forget the face she made. She was destroyed. It was so incredibly sad. It's almost been four years, I can't imagine how much pain, that mother has been through. We were standing on a downtown corner watching 4th of July parade, when we saw the parents of one of the players on a soccer team, I coach talked to someone, and began running like hell through the crowd with panic-stricken faces. Someone came to our door later, and told us the mat, their 10 years old son, had jumped off a float, to get some candy thrown by someone on another float and had tripped. The float he was on ran over his head killing him. Our son was on the same float, and hadn't gotten home yet. One of the most depressing moments in my life. The parents were never the same. The people on floats in our town never threw candy again. I think of Matt every 4th of July.